Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, new paradigms for a new world where we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. We are here nine times a week, Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m., and Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m., streaming live at all those times at richarddugan.com. We are on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, as well as YouTube, where you can watch these conversations. I hope that you will uh, take time to subscribe and click notifications so that when a new conversation is posted, you'll be notified and you'll be able to tune in, listen in and learn and be entertained and inspired. A reminder that Choices, which is my book, Five Steps for Life, it's available on Amazon.com in paperback, hardcover and Kindle with Audible soon to be released. We also ask that if you can support the work that we are doing financially, we do have a PayPal account. It is there for your security as well as ours. And when they ask for an email address to whom you're sending, please go to richard at richarddugan.com. That's the email address. If you go to richarddugan.com, there is also a link directly to PayPal so that you can send us whatever support you can. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you to those who have helped and to those who will help. We also ask that you take time during this decade of perfect vision, the 2020s, to go within to that quiet, peaceful, calm, still place and listen to that still, small voice. And with that, we now take you to our very special interview and guest here on Tell Me Your Story. We are here today to talk about, I think, some fascinating things. I've, I've always found this aspect of, of our conversations as a metaphysician always incredibly intriguing to me. We have two very special guests here on the program. We have Sheila Seppi and Barbara Lamb, and uh, we're going to talk about something very interesting. I want to welcome the two of you to our program and uh, uh, this, uh, what, I, uh, what I, I personally think is, is going to be a very fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for inviting us. I really appreciate it. I do too. Well, Barbara and uh, Sheila, I, I, I appreciate the two of you and the work that the two of you have done. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by giving folks, oh, I don't know, just a little bit of a background. Sheila, let's start with you. Now, uh, we, we, I think we've had you on before talking about walk-ins, the cosmology of the soul. We're also going to talk about cosmic convergence. The journey of walk-ins and as well as uh, star seeds and hybrids and uh, i know there is someone uh, that i know very well who uh, wants to become what is and now uh, this is no disrespect to anybody in the trans community uh, but there's the conversation about how she wants to be a trans human meaning as she puts it that she would lo- have no problem having her consciousness uh put into uh a a robot, if you will, or an android, if you will, to live for years and years and centuries and centuries kind of thing. Um, So those are the kinds of of directions. But uh, Sheila, let's start with you and uh, your background in this whole area in regards to walk-ins, because that's really, really where we're coming from. Yeah, I I do want to address your friend wanting to put her consciousness. And then obviously I'll definitely talk about walk-ins because that's my passion. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, whoever your friend is, I just want you to know, honey, you're going to live forever anyway. And you're <laughs> going to take all your consciousness with you. We are eternal beings. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're really attached to the human uh, aspect, going into a robot is not going to provide all of that. However, technology is always advancing. So you're going to live forever either way. Just a heads up. Okay. So how did you, what was it that, that set you on this path? Uh, Cause this is, uh, you know, unless you came into this universe, into this world rather uh, with that uh, predisposition, um, you know, that a lot of us do, we, we you know, the questions, Oh, so-and-so has uh, the, the baby coming into this world has uh, uncle Fred's nose. And, and then of course, as they grow, Oh, aunt Mary's temper. And, and then as they get older and they start investigating the world, Oh, has it has a uh, um, uh, uh, brother Bill's or or my you know the, the Uncle Bill's uh, um, predilection towards uh, astronomy and so on and so forth? How did you um, 
wind up doing? Are you a walk-in? Uh, maybe that's the first question I should ask. Is, are you a walk-in? Well, yes. Yes, I am. And that event occurred in 1999. And I always preface, if this had not happened to me, I probably would not believe that such a thing is possible because I was never raised that our spirit could move from body to body. I thought you had one life. You lived this one life, and when you died, you went to heaven or you went to hell. That was my upbringing. That was my uh, Christian ideology. However, uh, starting about really about 40 years ago, I became uh, started having all kinds of weird illnesses that were popping up. And over a period of about 20 years, I had been diagnosed with bone cancer, brain tumors, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. I used to walk with a cane. I was told I had the very beginning stages of multiple sclerosis and would end up in a wheelchair by the time I was 40. And I was walking with a cane. So, you know, I kind of believed them. Um, and then, I mean, I had a whole host of illnesses, urethema nodosum, sarcoidosis. And needless to say, my health was in the downward spiral. Um, I did everything Western medicine told me to do. I took all my medicines. I was very religious. I had all my scans. I did everything, but nothing seemed to be helping. And so I was really on a personal level starting to, you know, feel depressed and feel down and discouraged and like, you know, I don't think anything's ever going to help me. And I really wanted to get healthy because I had three little kids. So I went to bed that way. And September 23rd, Around 7 a.m. in the morning, it felt as if someone reached down, grabbed me by the hair of the head, pulled me bolt right up in bed, and it was like lightning ran through my body, and then I was in white space. I don't know how long I was in white space. I don't know if I had an NDE. I don't know what happened, near-death experience, but I know I was out of pain. I was feeling a tremendous amount of unconditional love. And if it had been left up to me, I would have chosen to stay in that place. But I didn't get a vote. So what happened is my peripheral vision started coming in and then my frontal vision. And then I find myself sitting in bed and I'm looking around, of course, wondering, what the heck am I doing sitting up in bed? What just happened? So I get out of bed. I'm walking across the carpet, which felt like I had never experienced carpet before, which was weird in and of itself. I walked past a mirror and I stopped and I was just staring at myself. And it was as if I was looking at me through someone else's eyes. And I thought, OK, this is weird. Then no sooner than I had had that thought, all of a sudden I began remembering past lives. Now. The important thing about that is when I went to bed, I didn't believe in them. I had no interest in past lives. I thought it was a cop out, a bunch of hooey. That was my thought at the time. Little did I know. So the next thing is I started remembering healing modalities that I had never studied. And the most, uh, I would say, curiosity was all of a sudden I started remembering universal truths. I started remembering about planes of existences and dimensions and densities and timelines and all of these different concepts that not only had I never studied or have interest in, but I couldn't even understand what it was I was being told. Mm -hmm. It's taken me some 20 years to really unpack all of that kind of information, but... The next thing that happened is all of a sudden my clairs came online. I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. You know, I was smelling things, hearing things, seeing things, experiencing, feeling them in my body. And needless to say, when you go from zero to wide open, that in and of itself will freak you out. And so over the period of the next three months, I tried to share my experience with people and they just start backing up. You know, I tried to explain it to my husband. He had no point of reference. He thought I was already crazy. So he's like, well, you're just, you're having a breakdown. And I'm like, well, you know what? That makes a lot of sense because my background was in psychology. I thought maybe I was having a disassociative disorder. I was having maybe paranoid delusions or that I was psychotic. I was going through everything I had studied and saying, well, that could be, that could be, but I didn't feel that way. 
I felt mm. grounded in my body. I felt very stable. However, um, within three months, I had left that marriage. And within another three months, I found my first spiritual teacher. And I found her by happenstance. She actually was a spiritual counselor that I went to see. And lo and behold, she also was of Native American lineage of the Hopi. And she had what was called women's circles that met and they talked about spiritual practices. I was new to the community. I was invited there. I thought, hey, this will be great. So I went and it was there that I began to learn more and more about a walk-in. And even though I knew about walk-ins, it was still really hard for me to wrap my brain around. Mm -hmm. Now, because I was very sick when I came in, that immediate new soul exchange, which no longer resonated with the physical form, but was of a higher vibrational frequency, immediately cleared and healed all the diseases that were in my body. And it took me a couple of weeks to really realize that because I was still acting as if. And then I started understanding that some of it was the medicines that I was taking. But when I went back and had my physical exam, mm -hmm. everything was fine. And I know I was guided, guarded, and protected because they didn't try to run a whole lot of uh, tests on me. They basically just patted me on the head and said, I guess our medicine worked and scooted me out the door, which was fine with me. But the most disturbing thing of all was that I did not have all my memories intact. Mm. So when I went to bed, I was Sheila. I remembered Sheila going to school. I remembered all my friends. I had my own set of friends. But when the new Sheila came in, when that new soul awakened this body, I no longer had a resonance with anything. I started clearing the cellular memory of this body, and some of that included old dysfunctional relationships. I came in with an immediate love for my three children, for my parents, and that was it. That's why it was easy to get a divorce within three months or to leave the marriage within three months because there was absolutely no resonance. I was look at this guy, and I'm like, why am I married to him? What, what's this all about? I would look through photos I still could not evoke those memories or those feelings. Mm. And so finally, my mom sat me down on a couch and said she wanted to talk to me because she thought I had the beginning stages of Alzheimer's because I didn't remember family members. I didn't remember old schoolmates. I had gone to a funeral and people were talking to me and it was like the lights on and nobody's home and you can only fake it so much. I was good at faking it. But my mom picked up on it. And so that's how I came in to be a walk in. And it's taken me since the 23rd of September, 1999, um, until about five years ago when I wrote the first book to really become public and start talking about it. And then with the second book, it was just like all of a sudden my collective, which is all of my guides, and that's a story in and of itself, said, okay, we're going to write this next book, blah, 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 blah. And they just dictated all the information to me. It, for me, it was a very easy book to write. A lot of it was an accumulation of knowledge I had written down in the past and, you know, fine-tuned it. A lot of the information about walk-ins I was able to add to from the other book I had written because... I became familiar with other types of walk-ins, not just the soul exchange that I had had. And then, you know, you have to, in my opinion, you have to include star seeds because our souls come from somewhere. And you also have to include the hybrids because there's a very active population of hybrids here on um, this planet. So that's how I came to be a walk-in. And that was a really quick down and dirty as to where I was, as to where I am now. First question, uh, 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 just a side question. Where are you? Where were you born? Where are you originally from? Originally, I was born in Virginia, and then my parents moved to uh, D.C. They both worked at the FBI for a number of years, and then we moved back to Virginia. And mm -hmm. I stayed in Virginia um, until, I mean, I moved to Kentucky or you know around the general area. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been in Colorado for a little over twenty years now. Barbara, Barbara Lamb is our guest. Barbara Lamb and her website, Barbara Lamb Regression is dot com is the website as well. Uh, tell us about your background. First of all, I'll start with that first question. Are you a walk in? Oh, no, I believe I am not. 
a walk-in, but I certainly am very, very interested in knowing about them and knowing about Sheila. Uh, so I, I think I'm a regular person uh, born here on this planet and uh, living a whole life here. And, and yet, somehow, I have been extremely interested in the whole realm of extraterrestrial beings and spiritual beings, other dimensional beings, and including the walk-ins, starseeds, and hybrids. Mm. And I uh, knew about this, especially before meeting Sheila, um, I had been... Uh, well, I, first of all, I was a psychotherapist, licensed psychotherapist. And then in the mid-1980s, I became involved in getting trained for a few years to be a past life regression therapist. And then in 1991, uh, people started coming to me for regressions because they had very peculiar experiences with unusual beings visiting them and taking them away for an hour or two and returning them. Um, and so I that began my work with extraterrestrial experiencers. Mm. And then in that practice, uh, it came to my attention very early um, about walk-ins. Uh, one of my colleagues in the past life regression field um, discussed a case that she had been working with and uh, with a woman who just was allergic to absolutely everything in this planet. And uh, they did quite a bit of regression work and finally realized that she had done that soul exchange, which Sheila has been speaking about. And so she was a soul from some other planet, some other kind of being who had come and taken up residence, made the soul exchange with another woman here. And once she realized that she was a walk-in, and no wonder uh, she was allergic to so many things here, because she had not been here before, um, then that, that cleared up, all the allergies cleared up. So it was fortunate that I knew about this because very early in doing the extraterrestrial work, I was at a, a conference, a UFO type of conference, and met a young woman who had suddenly overnight completely changed her whole motivation of being in life and her personality, what she was interested in and so forth. And it turned out that in regressing her, uh, that she was a walk-in. Okay. And uh, having come from an extraterrestrial society out in space. And then as time went on, um, another person came who was a walk-in from a more spiritual realm, celestial realm. And then another and another and another. And so there have been several people I've actually personally worked with now, uh, including Sheila, uh, who are walk-ins. And personally, I think this is wonderful that there is such a thing as walk-ins because we need a lot of help. We human beings, many, many, many human beings do. And um, pretty uh, regularly people have kind of a a lower consciousness, which means that they're very focused on life here in the physical domain and um, do not have much interest in or awareness of the spiritual beings that we really are. We really are ongoing, continuing souls who now and then choose to incarnate into a lifetime. Now, some of those souls choose to incarnate on Earth, as all of us have done. Mm -hmm. uh, but these souls choose to incarnate on another planet as another type of being, 
what we refer to as extraterrestrial beings. And some of them um, incarnate into what we could call celestial realms, spiritual realms. Uh, so anyway, the picture is a lot bigger than most of us grew up with. At least I could say that for myself mm. and anybody I know. Uh, but so the walk-ins come and um, they bring a new frequency, a higher frequency, even just by their being here and being around people. Uh, people feel something special, feel an upliftment being with one of these walk-ins. They may not know why they feel that, or they may not even know that that person is a walk-in, but still it has a very beneficial effect of that person, that walk-in being here. And then, of course, the walk-ins bring so much wisdom and knowledge from the realm that they came from, and they share that, and they really are uplifting the consciousness of humanity. So mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing. Now, and that's the same thing with these star seeds and with the hybrids, uh, that they are uh, people who are here, born here, live their whole lives here. So it's not a walk in situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're basically here to help raise the consciousness of humanity as well. And uh, they do all kinds of wonderful services that help individual people. And they help the just the collective of humanity as a whole by bringing their wisdom, their talents, their abilities, and their caring for humanity. You know, most of us, I think, go through life very involved in our daily lives and our schedules and our work, our families, our people we know, uh, keeping one appointment after the other, one date, and um, very involved in this physical world. And that's rightfully so. We came here in this life to do this. But we really need, in my opinion, really need expanding into understanding that there is so much more in reality. I know it just in my work getting involved with people who had had extraterrestrial experiences, my, my consciousness just, whoo, it just kept enlarging and enlarging and still does mm. with every person I work with in regression work. It's, it's absolutely amazing what there is in reality, in other realms, other dimensions, and in space of the zillions of different kinds of beings that exist just like we exist here. They exist on different planets in space. So the picture of reality for me just keeps getting larger and larger and more and more fascinating. So mm. hopefully what we are bringing through in the book, Cosmic Conver Convergence, um, will be expanding and enlarging people's understanding of reality as well. I have noticed, and not in my lifetime, but prior to it, I have noticed an interesting progression of the human race. And, and to me, it's fascinating and actually kind of exciting in this respect. Hmm. I mean, it's taken certainly generations, maybe hundreds, to reach a place where, especially uh, in this country, from the 17 to 1800s into the, uh, the 1900s, <clears throat> a process of sometimes grudgingly accepting the differences, specifically in regards to nationality slash skin tone of, of different peoples. Uh, as we moved forward into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and so forth, we started to deal with, and are still dealing with it, of course, uh, the issue of um, uh, gender in terms of uh, uh, relationship between opposite sex 
uh, opposite gender relationships, same gender relationships. And in just the last, I guess, 10 or 20 years, maybe 30, we've started to deal with this issue of gender assignment, if you will, or uh, uh, what what gender do you uh, 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 hail to, or 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 what are your pronouns, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I get the sense that this is like the next step, so to speak. That, and I, I'm sure that we, the three of us, would agree that you know, certainly we have these contracts that we will uh, fill out and sign before we enter this life, this lifetime, so to speak, or a lifetime, uh, to have certain experiences and what have you. And so it's like, it's we're not victims. We've chosen this. So it seems to me like this is the next step or uh, next uh, level in the evolutionary process of, shall we say, the consciousness of man. And again, there are a lot of people who are still back in the 17 and 1800s, uh, you know, um, uh, philosophically. They still, and which is kind of weird because they would have been born in the 40s or 50s, maybe the 30s, uh, 1930s, um, uh, you know, and yet they still hold on to those old ways of thinking. So when you're talking about this uh, um, uh, convergence, uh, which, by the way, when I first read the word, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, the harmonic convergence of the 1980, I think it was 87 or 88, you know, that kind of thing. What, what do you think? And I'll start with you, Barbara, in terms of this, it, it seems slow, but, you know, by the grand, in the grand scheme of things, it's moving pretty doggone quick. It's like those people who want to live back in the 50s, you want to live back there, you go for it. But you can't hold the population back from evolving forward in terms of this level of acceptance, regardless of the fact that, yes, it does go against the grain of your chosen philosophy. But again, that's all part of your contract. You chose to have that experience of the of the supposed diametrically opposed uh concepts or philosophies. Barbara, what are your thoughts? Well, I I am intrigued by your thoughts. <laughs> that was a really wonderful summary. Well, I totally agree that uh we are ongoing continuing souls forever mm -hmm. and that the soul realm we decide now and then to have a lifetime on on earth or on one of the other planets as another type of being and and we do make agreements with ourself basically with our soul uh, for certain kinds of things that we're going to learn through experience in coming into a life so let's just focus on earth life mm -hmm. uh coming to be a human and um as i understand it there are several things that every soul is coming into a life to work on. It might be an issue of communication or learning to be more loving or learning to concentrate and work better, work, work harder, more effectively. It might be to heal family relationships of family members you have been with in previous lifetimes. or I mean, I'm just giving a few examples, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, or maybe it could uh, be to come in and really help the uh, marine life on Earth mm -hmm. and you become an oceanographer first, uh, eventually. So um, anyway, I think that we're all very, very conscious as souls, probably more conscious than we are once we're living here in a body. And uh, that soul is very wise. The soul can look back on all the lifetimes that that soul has had previously and see the different themes uh, that that soul experienced and worked on and the themes that they learned from and the themes that they still need to learn from. And so they're very conscious, much more conscious, I think, 
of all of that than any of us are once we get into a body and live a life here. And so um, all of that wisdom, all of that knowing comes with the soul. And somewhere in us, there is that wisdom, that knowing, but we're usually pretty much closed off from that so that we can concentrate on living this life and having the experiences from which we will learn, which are all serving the growth of the soul. So that that kind of wraps it up um, from my point of view. And then you mentioned about uh, people being kind of stuck in different time periods. Um, yes, uh, I think those people are here working on whatever level their souls knew that they needed to concentrate on. So in some cases, that may be that they are here uh, for what we would consider bad purposes, you know, to be a criminal or to, uh, you know, harm other people. And um, we'd say, why would anybody choose that? Well, that soul of a person like that has decided that that soul needed to experience what it's like to be that kind of person and perpetrate negative things mm. in order to learn from it. And then maybe in the next lifetime, that person will choose to be very different in that life. And uh, maybe even one of those people who helps to apprehend the earlier lifetime as a, a criminal being, to apprehend other criminals in this lifetime, or the soul may come in to uh, be a helper to help rescue, help therapize the uh, victims mm. of kinds of perpetrations. So it seems to go from lifetime to lifetime sometimes, a theme. Uh, like you could be and you could be a perpetrator of something in one lifetime, and then the next lifetime, you might choose to be the victim of that kind of perpetration. And then in another lifetime, subsequent lifetime, you might choose to be the rescuer, the helper, the therapist, or some kind of helper of victims of that particular kind of perpetration. Mm. So it very often ties together. And then, of course, we have many lifetimes in which we're not a perpetrator or a victim or a helper, but we're working on other themes. Mm. And, and so it goes. So each lifetime really has purpose for that soul. And with each person, it might be quite different. I think one of the wonderful things in life is when we happen to come to meet people who have a similar sort of theme that they're experiencing in this lifetime, which would involve certain similar interests, probably. And those people become very special and very important to us. And then, of course, there's the whole issue of the family that we choose to be born into in an in incarnation. And certain issues with certain of those family members who we have been with in previous lifetimes and have certain things to balance out, uh, to work out. In some cases, it's more difficult than others. Um, but in other words, everything in our life now that we are and what we're basically doing really connects with other lifetimes that we've already have. And already all of these aspects are part of the development of the soul. Mm. We come into life to experience things and that helps to evolve our souls. Mm. Sheila, what would you like to add to that in regards to my uh, uh, initial uh, query about uh, time and this, uh, our uh, human race and its 
gradual acceptance of these differences that go from the surface, which is interesting. They go from the surface deeper into both the physical, let alone the spiritual um, uh, aspect of uh, human existence. Hey, thanks. I agree with everything that both of you have said. And I would like to add, just like I woke up to be in a walk-in, other people might wake up to be a star seed, or others may realize they're in a hybrid, like we talk about in the book. What would happen if all of a sudden you're a young lady and you wake up and everything about you feels like a man? You have to remember on the other side, we have neither, we don't have a sex. Now we can choose to portray ourselves as masculine or feminine, but when we come into physical form, we choose the feminine body or we choose the masculine body. But what happens if you made a choice to be feminine and all of a sudden you're waking up and your soul is having memories of either past lives or more of your soul is masculine, but you find yourself in a feminine body. And the same thing happens for young men. They may wake up and begin to identify more with the feminine because they carry more feminine energy because our souls carry both. And we have to remain balanced with that. With these children who some identify as cats and dogs, and they now have litter boxes and schools and different things, what happens if these children woke up and they remembered they were Lyran and that they came from a cat society mm. or they woke up and they felt like a dog because they came from that type of a society. So having the experience of what happened to me, I don't question anyone else's yeah. experiences because you don't know what their soul memories are. The other thing I do want to bring into play is the soul contracts. You know, if these individuals have come in to have these experiences, you know, they're really paving a hard way for themselves, but they're paving a way for others to be mm -hmm. able to express themselves more openly. And they're going to have a tougher time, but they agreed to that on the other side. And so, you know, yes, there's always going to be people that just jump into it because it sounds fun. I remember we used to play like we were horses mm -hmm. when we were kids, you know, mm -hmm. but I wasn't fed hay, you know. So maybe people are identifying now with horses and they do feel like horses. Some people, they don't want to eat. You know, some people, they feel strange when they're putting food in their bodies. What happens if they're waking up and they have body memories because their soul has imprinted that they came from a planet where they didn't eat? So I, I see everything as an open possibility of the soul. And for the transhumanism, what happens if these individuals came from a society where they already were part of AI? And so, you know, you really have to step out of a box and begin to look at everything. You know, there's past lives can play a big part of it. Soul memories can play a big part of it. And all we can do on an individual basis is choose how we're going to respond to that, as well as anything else that happens in our life. Yeah. I have uh, observed the... Um the negative uh, reactions by people to these kinds of differences uh, that we've talked about, all of them. And as far as the skin color and uh, where you come from uh, internationally, for shall we say, and sometimes nationally, uh, you have no control over that. That is not a choice. You are from Africa or you are from China or you are from India and you have that skin tone. That isn't a choice. But when it comes to those internal things, like uh, uh, being heterosexual or homosexual or being trans, what have you, um, I often thought about this as a uh, legally blind young man uh, growing up in school, getting bullied and so forth. And I didn't really have a choice there. I mean, it just was the way I was. But these other folks who it is a it is claimed that they have chosen to be this way knowing 
the abuse that they would receive, why would an individual make that kind of a choice? And I mean, yeah. you know, that would boggle my mind. Now, again, understanding the whole contractual thing, I get that. But by the same token, it's like, if I wanted to live a peaceful life, that wouldn't be what I would choose, especially, let's say, in the 50s, 60s, or, or, or 70s, or even into the 80s. Um, I, that, I wouldn't choose that. Okay. But Which well, leads me to believe that it isn't a choice. Not, not in the, not in the, this reality moment. It's not a choice. It is what they chose before they came into this world. That's the contract. Okay. Yes. But in terms right. of the reality and, and the way the world sees them, they say it's a choice. It's like, no, it's not a choice. This is the way they came into this world. It's an educational process, yeah. just like anything else. Yeah. And the choice that people make is how they choose to respond to prejudice, yeah. how they choose to respond to whatever is unfolding that may expand them beyond their capabilities. And they don't have the coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in which to truly begin to embrace something that's outside of themselves. And so honestly, I think all of these individuals have come to help humanity learn that exercise to expand beyond what we are. Now, what's going to happen when we have a plethora of craft that land? You know, if we can't get along with each other, what's going to happen when we have our galactic brothers and sisters. And it's just a matter of time, in my opinion, before they come. And I, you know, I don't look at extraterrestrials like it's a them or an us. Mm -mm, because, mm -mm. as I said, I came in with certain knowings and certain understandings from my perspective, where I was before I incarnated. And I feel very lucky that I've been able to retain a lot of those memories and to me, they are our galactic brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And maybe the best thing to do would have someone to come and, and to land. And then we could put aside the differences that we have here. <laughs> because what's happening now, as more and more people are awakening, more and more people are awakening, not just spiritually, but they're awakening to, you know what, maybe the government doesn't have my best interest. Maybe healthcare shouldn't be telling me what to put in my body or not to put in my body. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And they're starting to open up and they're starting to question the reality that basically have been shoved down all of our throats, that this is the way things are. Well, guess what? You're more than what you've been told you are. This whole world has more. We didn't grow up learning about being a multidimensional being and having aspects of our soul in various dimensions and the fact that we can access those at will once we begin to practice that. Nobody ever taught us that, mm -hmm. yet it is real. It yeah. is and many, many people experience it. So, you know, to all these people who have come to be, you know, way showers, hats off to you because you've chosen a hard road to hoe and you have my mm -hmm. utmost respect for being willing to step out of the box, for being willing to put yourself out there and being willing to be true to yourself, to say, this is who I am and this is how I feel. So, yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well said. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of thoughts um, that, that came to mind. I uh, was listening to uh, an interview with a physicist, <clears throat> and he was asked the question, if, uh, if there were one telecast, that one broadcast that uh, you would want aliens to see, um, what would it be? And without hesitation, he said, I would want them to watch the uh, broadcasts of our Olympics because it showed how we could compete, so to speak, against each other or with each other and have winners and losers and yet still have, shall we say, that brotherhood and sisterhood, that connectedness, if you will. 
And I thought that was interesting. Another point is <clears throat> when those ships, if they haven't already come, when they do come, I, I find it once again, the height of human arrogance to think that they are malevolent, that they are here to enslave us and so on and so forth. Because I do believe that they have and are here today. And because they have the capacity to travel interstellar, we wouldn't even be having these conversations. It would already be over if that was their intent. Seriously. Exactly. Okay. Right. So those, those are a couple of points. We are talking today about, uh, we'll talk more about the, especially the contents of the book, Cosmic Convergence. We're talking with Sheila, Sheila Seppi, SheilaSeppi.com and Barbara Lamb, Barbara Lamb Regression.com. Uh, and Barbara also has some books as well. We'll talk about that as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, we are uh, having a fascinating conversation about walk-ins specifically. We, we've uh, talked a bit on the uh, side of the aliens, and, 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 and the fact of the matter is, again, once the height of human arrogance, that we are, we are alone in the universe, that we're the only species, we're the only sentient beings in the whole of the universe. Really? Okay, then there is no God. Because if we're it, then God is a sentient being you know, that, that concept, if you will, then there's no God because we're it. I mean, we're the only, the only beings in the universe. No, we're not. And I've, I've never believed that. Uh, and there is, uh, but, but that goes to an interesting point too, that we can talk about. And this whole aspect of belief, Greg Braden talked about this on a program we had with him uh, some years ago <clears throat> from his book, uh, the healing power of belief. He said one day, we will no longer believe. We will know. Mm -hmm. But you can't argue belief. The moment you start arguing with someone about their belief, you have already lost. And you are the fool. Because that's what they choose to believe. And a belief isn't based upon facts. And that's what I find so fascinating, especially when it comes to these different philosophies, Christianity specifically. And I made this point in a previous interview with some folks that if you use science to validate your belief or your faith or your philosophy, it's no longer a belief. It's no longer a faith. And it was never designed to be, if you will, designed um, to, to be uh, uh, supported by facts and science. You either believe it's uh, what was it? Uh, Jesus, I think he said, uh, blessed is he who has not seen and yet believes. Um, what you two are talking about on this program is this belief or is this supported with at some level some level of fact slash science well i think it's really backed um from experience um you know hearing from people who are walk-ins or star seeds or hybrids mm -hmm. and you know getting into what their experience is um i i think all of this is such a a broadening of our understanding of reality. And I think that our book, Cosmic Convergence, does an incredible job of opening up people's understanding of these different aspects of reality, different aspects of people uh, who are in these categories. And it, it all adds to... Um, a much more expanded view of what really is. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. I know that some people really do not want to expand beyond what they already understand. And uh, that's how that is. And that's acceptable because that's what they are here for. Mm -hmm. But for lots of people in the world who want to know more, mm -hmm. you know, want to know, hey, what, what, what is this game of life all about? 
you know, why am I here? What, what's the purpose of the whole thing? Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly meet people who are not particularly aware or even aware at all about walk-ins and hybrids and star seeds. And yet they're, they have that openness of, hmm, you know, what's the point? What's the point of, of, of life? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. What am I, what are we all doing? You know, and, um, and that's good. I think that, that more and more people, as far as I know, are asking those questions and when they do ask the questions, they're more open to knowing about some of these aspects that that we're talking about. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, the two of you have connected to create this uh, this book, uh, which is Cosmic Convergence. I, I I want to talk about the book as well, but I also want to talk about some of the other works that you have written, uh, Barbara. Okay. Tell us tell us well, about some of the other. I uh, have been a very dedicated crop circle researcher uh, for many years, beginning in 1991, the same year, incidentally, that I uh, began to do my work with extraterrestrial experiencers. That was quite a year. I also went to Tibet in that year <clears throat> mm. and had about five people um, to uh, find out more through regression about the peculiar events, encounters, which turned out to be extraterrestrial that they had had. But anyway, through all the years, I continued with my crop circle research, uh, going to England every summer, having the wonderful experience of visiting lots, probably 1,500 or 1,800 crop circles personally over that time. So in the year 2000, a um, uh, Another one, wonderful woman, Judith Moore, and I got together and um, wrote the book called Crop Circles Revealed. The subtitle is Language of the Light Systems. So um, that was my, my very first book. I had not expected to write any book at all. But then a few years later, um, I wrote a book with uh, another co-author called Alien Experiences, based on 24 of the cases of the many more than that uh, regressions that I had done for extraterrestrial encounters. And, um, and then uh, I got to know some hybrids, uh, people who are living here on Earth, but who had been given extraterrestrial genetics and found that they were absolutely wonderful people really here to help to serve humanity to raise the consciousness of humanity and to acquaint people with the fact that there is extraterrestrial life out there in space um, so um, we wrote the book meet the hybrids the lives and missions of ET ambassadors on Earth. And then another woman uh, got in touch with me and we, Mary Edwards, and we wrote the book for children called Kids Adventures with ET Friends in Space. I'm very happy about that book because it can validate for children who were having these experiences I validate for them and their parents and just open up a whole vista of understanding for even adults who would read that book. Mm. And then uh, now, very happily with Sheila, we have done this cosmic convergence. So none of this was expected on my part. It just simply grew out of all the work that I was doing and all the fascinations that I was having and learning more and more about. So I'm one mm -hmm. of those people who really likes to share what's important to me in terms of understanding of life. So it's it's a pleasure uh, to be able to share in a talk like this 
or in a book or how however I can share. And I, I love seeing people's awareness expanding mm-hmm. as they hear these things. Uh, that that I think is delicious. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's very needed yeah. in, in this on earth. You know, I watch a lot a few I watch documentaries from time to time, and the one phrase that is often used about a particular event that happens is and this particular event changed the course of history. And I'm going, what? What do you mean? Cha- How did it change? Did you know what the course was going to be? You, did you have access to these different timelines on a spiritual level, which you need to explain to us in the documentary that you did, and that this event is just that? It changed the course of history. How do you know that this wasn't the direction that history, uh, that the future was supposed to take in the first place? I mean, we, we, on a human level, we don't know. We have no clue. What I mean, for all I know, there's a plane headed for my, so, my, uh, my uh, uh, do, domicile where I'm doing this interview right now. It's headed here, but not to land. Okay, I'm going to be departing this earth and moving on to the next realm. We we just don't know, and I always found that strange. So when I think about this, when you this cosmic convergence, that's a different phrase from uh, uh, the aspects of uh, well. I mean, let me back this up. Uh, 2008, you heard this over and over again when it came to the economy. We've never been here before. But what did we do? The same thing we did just during the regular times. We did exactly the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and I, I find that fascinating when talking from a cosmological standpoint uh, that that we have any clue as to what's going to happen. I mean, there's a... There's a, there's a um, a meteor they call it's called apophis and my friend dr sky steve cates as well as of course neil degrasse tyson they've talked about it and it's supposed to pass, pass close to earth uh in a few years and if it if its trajectory continues on its orbit if you will or its path it's going to swing back around around 2035 and if it maintains a particular path it's going to smash right into the earth potentially an extinction event for humanity as well as everything else or it could go right by but even closer than before and i i sit there and i i look at that going okay you know we we have a a way of doing the math and the science and all that to sort of predict these kinds of things and we could come up with and devise something between now and 35 to deflect it if we felt it was necessary I myself would much rather call upon Bruce Willis and uh, and his crew to <laughs> to, uh, to 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 go up and take care of this for us. But this whole cosmic convergence thing, it seems to me that uh, you have an awareness that thing something's happening. I mean, I mentioned when we first started, when I first saw the word convergence, I thought of the harmonic convergence of, of the late 80s, 1980s. What's coming? What's What are you aware of? Or what do you believe uh, is that this convergence, is this cosmic convergence is all about? Sheila? Well, personally, yeah. Personally, I believe that it is a time of awakening on this planet to the fact that we're souls having a human experience, not humans with a soul. And that very knowledge itself can begin to shift our perspectives. People are waking up to the fact that they are so much more than they have been told that they are. People are waking up to the fact that maybe they would feel really good about being in service to others Mm -hmm. and not so much in service to self. Other people are waking up to the fact that maybe what I have, I could share with other people. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm seeing, literally, I am seeing, even in the communities that I work in, I am seeing a shift in people's perspectives. Now, I see more and more people who are talking about their spirit guides, that they have meetings with Yeshua or Jesus. They're working with Mother Mary. More and more people are talking about, you know, I had this conversation with my angel. I had this conversation with my collective. Whatever the case may be, more and more people are opening up to receive more light. And when I'm talking about light, I'm talking about a light quota in our sales. Mm -hmm. So many people tell me, I want to be in my light body. I want to be in my light body. Well, guess what? You are in your light body. It's just covered up by your meat suit. Okay. It's covered up by your earth suit. Now, because we are souls, because we are already in those light bodies, the more we grow, the more we know, the more we make positive changes for ourselves. Maybe we choose to be a little kinder today. Maybe we choose to reach out and extend a helping hand to someone. As that happens, the cells of our body literally are capable of holding more and more light in them. And we're light beings. You know, if the sun were to go away, we would perish along with everything else. But we definitely would perish because we have to have that light. We have to have not just that warmth, but we have to have the coating mm -hmm. that that sun sends to us each and every day. As we raise our vibrations, as we release those things that no longer serve us, as we become higher in our vibration, we can hold higher frequencies, whether it's from the sun, whether it's from the spiritual work that we do on ourselves, whether it's because of the consciousness mm -hmm. that begins to expand. And when I was looking at names for the book, obviously it had to be cosmic because I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about dimensions and densities and planes of existence and the harmonic universe and the holographic gridding system of the body and the chakras and the meridians and the ley lines of the body, etc. you know. So that was very cosmic in its nature, but that convergence is of all that knowledge coming to us and our ability to be able to accept it, just like that cosmic convergence that happened in 87 when all those planets lined up and there were people by the thousands opening up and doing meditations together, group meditations. You know, thousands of people were in study groups. Thousands of people were focusing inward instead of outside themselves. And I feel like that we have reached this place that now we're able to reach outside ourselves and to bring in that cosmic knowledge and to be able to hold it and to act upon it on this planet. Hmm. Barbara, your your thoughts. Well, I do think that there is a big convergence happening in the sense that the beings who are out there in space and in other dimensions are making a point, it seems, of uh, visiting more human beings and giving them experiences. There's much more convergence between extraterrestrial life and human life, and there's a convergence between other dimensional realms and other dimensional life and human life. Uh, so I think it's, I think everybody is expanding. Uh, those beings out there who visit us are expanding by having more contact with humans. And in some cases, it's not physical contact, it's contact through. Uh, channeling through downloading of information, uh, having conversations with people. And people who are having these conversations may or may not be aware of what the other end of the conversation is. Uh, that is that these are other beings. Mm -hmm. and uh, but it, but it's happening more and more. I think uh, one example is that, uh, more and more people whom I meet anyway are talking about their guides 
there's which means their spirit guides and that they're, they're getting messages or you know i i met somebody recently at a meeting and said that person said you know i wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for my guide inspiring me to come here mm -hmm. and now that I'm here i'm realizing what the purpose is you know how important it is for me to be here because of what I'm experiencing and what I'm learning. And I'm grateful to my guide who gave me the nudge to come here. So I think that, um, you know, the, the whole reality in space and the reality in other dimensions um, are really coming together more and more with us. And, and of course, that means that more and more of us are aware of that, that that's going on. Yeah. So, you know, I, I am amazed sometimes. I'll meet a person who, whom I think, you know, just isn't thinking about these things at all, in my superficial opinion. And then the person will say something, I think, oh my gosh, that person is really tuned in to a much larger reality than I ever would have guessed. Mm. Uh, because they say that um, their guide has has helped them or uh, maybe they've had a peculiar experience that they don't understand and that might turn out to be an extraterrestrial encounter or any number of things that that more and more people, I think, are, are wondering about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look at their lives in a different way. Hmm, maybe there's more going on in my life than I had realized, or maybe there's more to me than I had realized. And I think that that's a very uh, inspiring thing, yeah. and more <laughs> growing in that way. What I uh, have often commented on uh, when I look at the the world in which we live, especially in this country. And I have these conversations about the fact that the consciousness is rising. There are more and more people who are becoming more and more aware of what is real and the tabletop that I'm sitting in front of. No, that's not real. Okay. That is not what is real. Um, I, and, and the one quote I can come up with, and of course there are a few different interpretations of this, but uh, I, I love what, uh, 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 Johannes Graeber, who was a Catholic priest back in the, I think the thirties. And he wrote a book called communication with the spirit world of God, but he also had chat and it was uh, somewhat, it was a channeled work. And he also had channeled a version of the new Testament and the passage that comes to mind when I think about this and trying to get across to people that, that, that none of the, none of what you're, you're tied up in has any bearing on anything other than of course, your learning experiences, your lessons, Seek ye first, and this is Johannes Graeber, his translation, seek ye first communication with the spirit world of God, and all these things will be added unto you. The King Jimmy is, seek ye first the kingdom of God. To me, same difference. And it's like all of the stuff that we're facing today, and, and as you and I, the two of you and I are conversing, we're one week away from uh, a rather uh, um, interesting event. It's called an election. And in 10,000 years of human time, it's not going to matter. It's irrelevant. That's why I often, uh, when I think about uh, what the uh, founding fathers wrote in the preamble, uh, that we are giving life, uh, that uh, um, the inalienable rights, you know, uh, of, among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, I hear, of course, about life and liberty and freedom and all those the different things, those different aspects. I would never, ever say that they're wrong. What I would say is that with the conversation we are having about raising the consciousness and so forth, they're irrelevant from the spiritual perspective from the learning lessons perspective, very relevant. But when it comes to the light body you were talking about, Sheila, and you know where we come from, if you will, 
and and in a matter matter of speaking, that's almost a, a silly statement because in in reality, we've never really left where we quote unquote came from. We're here. Okay, it's just that we put on these these suits, these earth suits. I like that better than meat suit, earth suit. <laughs> uh, but but that when we start to raise our consciousness, we begin to truly understand that I am important slash we are important, not I they. It's there is no they uh, them and us. It's it's we. You know. And uh, so I find this conversation fascinating. Cosmic Convergence is the title of the book that we're uh, having the conversation about primarily with Barbara Lamb and Sheila Seppi, the co-authors of this book. And you are listening to Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, I want to thank the two of you for giving us so much time here on the program. When I say so much time, when we go over an hour, I say thank you for giving us more than an hour. We could go on much longer, certainly. I think people need to go to the website either, well, uh, SheilaSeppi.com, where, uh, uh, where you can find the book, as well as Amazon.com and all of the other books, as well as BarbaraLamRegression.com. The uh, websites will be in the description portion of both the podcast and videocast, so you can click on those and you can go to their websites while you're listening to or watching uh, the uh, conversation here on Tell Me Your Story. Again, I thank the two of you for joining us. And I do have three questions that I ask all of my guests and i will ask those of you uh and uh, i'm going to start with sheila and uh this gives you barbara an opportunity to, uh, to formulate your uh, answer to my question uh but uh, yes. first of all sheila who is sheila seppi i'm an expression of source spirit I am a divine expression of source when you get right down to it if you look at it from an earth point of view. You know, I'm an author, a healer, a mother, a grandmother. I'm all of those things. But truly, um, when I look at who I truly am, I am a divine aspect of source. Who is Barbara Lamb? Well, I am a soul, ongoing, continuing soul, who has chosen to come into this particular lifetime as this particular person in this particular body uh, to experience many things. And I think that the main thing that I'm aware of that I came into this life for is to show people how it really is. And by that, I mean that we are all ongoing, continuing souls immortal souls, having all these different experiences, and that there are others besides us, others in space, different kinds of others to many extents, different kinds of bodies, different kinds of cultures, but just as viable, just as real as we are. And the convergence part that I am very happy about is that those souls, those incarnated souls in space are more and more being in touch with us, or that is that we are more and more being aware of our contacts with those beings. Uh, so that there is a, a convergence of those lives and our lives awareness of each other, hopefully respect for each other and acceptance of each other. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, I'll start with you with question two. What gets you up in the morning? Oh, every day there is something new to experience, something new to learn, something new to ponder about. It's It's never just the same old thing day after day. And um, my life is such that each day is different anyway, depending on whom I might be working with in a regression, whom I might be in contact with for some other reasons. Uh, doing interviews of this sort is a great pleasure for me. So there's 
never a day that is not interesting to me. Mm. There's never a time when I am bored. There's always something to focus on that is wonderful, even if it's having lunch on my patio and enjoying my beautiful plants and looking at the beautiful sky. Mm. It's all good. Sheila, what gets you up in the morning? I have to say ditto. You know, I, <laughs> I'm i one of those people, I wake up and I am ready to go. I hop in the shower. I take the dog for a walk. I'm on the phone. I'm talking with people. I'm working, creating. I, I just love life. So I'm always excited um, to wake up. There's some people that's like, nobody can be as happy as you are. That has to be fake. And I'm like, hey, what you see is what you get. I am what I am. I'm a happy person. Mm. And I, I mean, I love life. Every day is different. Every day. And every day is precious. Yes. 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 So, Sheila, final question. What was your best day? Hmm. I would have to say the day I walked into the spotty and became a human and the mother of my three children. Mm -hmm. That was the best day on earth. Barbara, what was your best day? I cannot say there was one best day because there have been so many days that have been really wonderful, really mm -hmm. rewarding. I, I can't narrow it down to just one. Well, I want to thank the both of you once again for joining us here on Tell Me Your Story, sharing your stories and the work that you uh, both got together to create, and that is Cosmic Convergence. And again, thank you so much. And I thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, where we are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. Until... Our next broadcast podcast video cast. Love to Lal. Jeanette, I'm still listening. Dad, continue to be happy because I am. Smokey, I'll see you on the other side. And to my dear friend Zorro, aho, aho. <laughs>